Eric in Pennsylvania. Hi, Eric. Go ahead. Hi, Eddie. How you doing? Great. Great. What's going on? Okay. So um, I saw Rocket Man yesterday. I know you saw it uh, over the weekend. Just wanted to comment on it. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. With, uh, I'm not into the whole musical thing whatsoever. It was kind of just weird. It was like from the opening scene, you're kind of getting into it, and all of a sudden they break into like a whole like five to five minute like uh, skit. You know what I mean? It was it was kind of distracting. Well, yeah, kind of I, I talked there? about it. I talked about it extensively at the start of my volume show earlier today. I went to the movie on Friday night, and the good news is. Even though the movie didn't win the box office, it came in third. It's already made its money back in the the cost of the movie. The budget on that movie was only like forty million, which isn't insane for Hollywood films, and it made its money back in terms of worldwide gross. So it's going to be profitable, which means we're going to get a ton more biopics. But as as people were listening, if you're listening to the volume show earlier or you listen to the replay tonight, uh, I was very much shocked and not being a fan of musicals at all really sort of bummed out that they went down that road and it was more of a a musical thing than anything where they were all of a sudden breaking from the character dialogue and going into sort of song and dance routines that was not what i was expecting exactly but for the actual like bio part of it i thought it was pretty good um i thought i thought overall i kind of i thought i thought uh the, the lead actor did a pretty good job portraying out john um, the one thing I thought was a little bit weird was that they didn't really get into like him making a lot of the classic albums, like Goodbye Yellow Brick, Yellow Brick Road. They didn't really touch on that at all. They kind of glossed over that. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree. See, yeah, Eric, I kind of wanted to see some more of that. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I really wanted the the creation of the records, the, the the landmark songs, the landmark recordings. It was. It was a lot about a lot of other things, and then these sort of vignettes of them dancing and singing that made it like a, a Broadway musical or something. It really took away from the storyline that I wanted. I thought the acting was fine, thought the performances were fine. Obviously, whether, you know, they're not, it's, you know, the songs, no one could argue out in John's songs or brilliant pieces of, of history there. But it, yeah, it was not the movie I was expecting. It was not the movie I'd hoped for. Even the whole thing of him being in therapy or in AA and that outfit and sort of narrating his own story, I thought that was weird too. I, I just, to me, it, it felt like they were trying, and thank you, Eric, for the call. They were trying to just get too, I don't know, too cute, uh, too just trying to get away from the biopic elements of it and be different. I don't know. Maybe it was their way of being able to inject more music into the storyline. But I, I, I agree. I wanted much more about the creation of the records, the creation of Elton John, of the landmark songs, them being written. And I, I absolutely am not a fan. I despise Broadway musicals, and I was not a fan of that element being introduced into that movie now in fairness to elton john i saw a quote from him and he said that he doesn't really consider rocket man to be a biopic he said he considers it to be more of a musical fantasy that's pretty accurate but here's the bottom line the motley one did well on netflix the elton john one is going to make money the Queen one is gargantuan. There is already a Boy, a boy George Culture Club one in production. We are going to get we are going to get biopics like nobody's business, folks. As long as they continue to make money in the theaters, whether that's good or bad depends upon how you feel about the films. Andy in Florida, hi Andy. Hey. Eddie, my rock and roll brother from another mother. How you doing, man? Great. What do you got today, Andy? What's going on? Well, listen, first thing, I'm sending you a big bag of boiled peanuts, okay, so you can appreciate <laughs> what we call country caviar, and you need to you need to let it in. Andy, Andy, thank you for following me on Twitter, first of all, because that's why you would know that. But secondly, or listening to the volume show, because I mentioned it there. But I, I you're what you, what Andy's referring to is I 
I just wrapped up three weekends of festivals, three in a row. I did Epicenter North Carolina, which I performed at with Don and Jim. I did Hangout, which I shot for my Access TV show. Season two, by the way, premieres 9.30 Eastern, July 7th. So mark that on your calendars. And then last week, hosting Rocklahoma. But when I went through Pensacola, Florida, I stopped at a convenience store, and I love peanuts, but I have never seen boiled peanuts in my life. I don't even understand that. I took a photo. I put it on my social media saying, what's up with this? Andy, you are a connoisseur, it sounds like. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. They are. I mean, it's a little boy. It's a, it's a um, required taste, though, acquired taste, if you will. But let so, me ask you this. Now, I don't want to take too much time with the, and bore the audience, but being someone that is not familiar with that, and, I, and these were like, as you saw the photo I took, they were on this kettle, in this kettle yeah. sitting on a shelf. So if I were to open yeah. that kettle, would I see yeah. peanuts mashed up, or are they still in their no. regular form? Right, so they take a green peanut in the shell, and they basically slow cook it for about 24 hours, right? And when you then take those peanuts out of there in that crock pot, they're sitting in this this luxurious broth of goodness, right? And you just put those in your cup. And then when you open the peanuts, they just open real easy because the shells are so soft. And then the nuts are so soft. So it just looks like a peanut, but it's been cooking in these juices for 24 hours. So it's real soft. What, 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 hold, on, hold on, hold on. What are the juices? Like what, what do they put, what do they cook them in? So it's like a mixture, you know, of water and, and salt and Cajun spices, you know, kind of like a soup, if you will. So over time, it just penetrates the shell and makes it soft. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we call country caviar. So they're right? cooked, they're cooked in the shell. In the shell, slow cook for about 24 hours. And the one, the good ones are the ones you see on the side of the road. Those are the real deal ones where it's like, wow, you know, I even I even order them online from Carolina because the ones in the grocery store are that good. <laughs> Man, I've never you know, I've never heard of them. I've never seen them. And when I saw and and like I said, I am a big peanut fan. I love peanut butter. I love uh, Thai food with peanuts. I'm all about anything with peanuts. But I didn't know if I was up for the boiled peanut thing it was a little outside of my wheelhouse but i appreciate the clarification next time i'm i'm down south maybe i'll get a little more adventurous but what else did you want to say andy i wanted to call you i just wanted to give you a quick review on saturday i went to see dio returns the hologram show and i'd waited so long to see this you know last year i'm so fascinated by this technology last year i saw roy orbison hologram so now i've seen two holograms which i'm probably the minority and I just wanted to share some thoughts with you as to what I saw. Well, please do, because the, that tour started a few days ago. I know they actually had to cancel one of the shows early on, and I know that it's been out now. They've probably done three or four shows. I've yet to see it yeah. myself. Give me your take. What was it like? Yeah, so I saw the second show. It was in Orlando. The venue held about 1,000 people. There was probably about six, 700 people there. I got there. Uh, Jeff Bazzuti was there in the lobby taking pictures with the ladies. I saw a couple guys walk by with their That Metal Show t-shirt. So, you know, you're well represented there. Uh -huh. And, of course, they, they can't tell all the seats because some seats can't can't see the hologram. So get to the show. Jizzy Pearl opens up, which was great. I hadn't seen him since he sang with Rat. That guy's a maniac, real good. So you had an opening band, which was, which was cool. And then, you know, the Dio show. Uh, the the stage is amazing because it's it's one continuous screen the sides the top everything is a screen a real high quality screen so you know you're seeing you know Ronnie in the crystal ball you're seeing mob rules or demons or dragons or rainbows you're seeing all this trippy stuff so it's one giant visual effect which was awesome you've got drums and guitar to the right and you've got uh, bass and keys to the left, so you'll also see live footage on these screens. So you're seeing Craig Goldie play, and then you're seeing him play in 1986. So the whole visual was amazing. Ronnie sings about seven songs, and then Ripper and Oni, they were amazing. So they're singing when Ronnie's not. At one point, the three sing together. One thing to mention is the songs that Ronnie sang, those are live vocals, and they sounded pristine and amazing, 
and those must have been recorded off a soundboard that must have come from the family. So mm -hmm. there's got to be live albums in the vault. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the I know they took. I know they took some of the audio from various live videos and recordings and stuff that they had for sure. It's a, it wasn't just one show, from what I understand. It was from different right. sources. The show, you know, there's so much going on that Ronnie is kind of like an added bonus. If you haven't seen this show, it's it's unbelievable. Um, you've got, you know, the bass solo, the guitar solo, the, the drum solo. But the one thing to talk about as far as a hologram is this. When I saw Roy Orbison, you've got, he had 30 people on stage, an orchestra, all these musicians, 15 on the left, 15 on the right. When Roy began and they said, ladies and gentlemen, Roy Orbison, Roy was center stage and he just rose out of the floor. And my heart stopped because I couldn't believe I was watching Roy Orbison and I could see all the people behind him. And there he was center stage where with the Ronnie, which you wouldn't know this if you didn't see another hologram, Ronnie is in a center section and he's all the way in the back against another video screen. And Ronnie looks amazing. The hologram looks amazing, but, but because he's so far back, it almost looks 2d instead of 3d. At one point, the bass player went into that back section and started jamming with Ronnie, and he was kind of leaning up against him, so he must have known the timing of the hologram. But because he's so far back, he's, it's more 2D. So the only thing I would change is to bring Ronnie more forward so there's a depth perception. But listen, man, uh, Ripper and Oni and the music and the visuals, I mean, you know, I cheered, I cried, I had my horns up. You know, I saw Ronnie many times, and the only thing I can say to you, sir, is, you know, I love Ronnie, but I never met the man. And and for you to see a friend of yours now in a hologram form must be a total mind trip, wouldn't you say? Well, yeah. I mean, and I've heard that that's the case, Andy, that uh, it's it's very different when you actually knew the person. Thank you, Andy, for all the reporting there, both on the Dio hologram and the boiled nuts. <laughs> I, yeah, I've heard that. Now, I've not, again, I've not seen the Dio hologram, I, I hope to at some stop on the tour when my schedule permits. When it's here in the New York area, I won't be here. The vast majority of shows that I see these days are away from home because I'm away from home for various reasons so much. But I've yet to see it. I've heard mostly positives, but I have heard consistently from a lot of people the issue about the screen being too far towards the back of the stage. That's got to be like that for a reason. Maybe it's something I'm sure they'll work on and continue to tweak as it goes. And um, I'm glad you enjoyed it. This hologram stuff, folks, if people like it and it does well, and these shows do well, we are going to get a barrage of those as well. Get ready. If it's supported and people embrace them, we will see tons of them coming down the pike and if they don't do so well because remember about the whole hologram thing people think oh it's just they're just setting up a projector or whatever no that's not a a, a tour of a hologram is no different than a tour of any live rock band why because it is a live rock band everything but the hologram is live so you're still dealing with buses and tour managers and uh, people, road crew people setting stuff up and sound men. There's nothing that wouldn't be out on the road costing money that wouldn't be in a regular live show. As a matter of fact, there's more because you have to have people out there looking after and running the hologram portion as well as all the live elements. So it's not cheap. It's certainly not cheaper than a regular live rock band or a fully live rock band. And, you know, it's got to make sense financially for these things to continue to grow, and we'll keep an eye on them.